Praise the Lord. I'm Thomas Matthew IV, and I brought a great book with me that I wrote called Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. And uh, this book will change your life. So first there's the Bible, and then there's my book. If you get to heaven and you haven't gotten my book, I think the angels would be very mad and ask you, why didn't you read the prophet's book? And you, you won't know what to tell them. So don't, don't be embarrassed. Make sure whenever you can get this book, you get it. And uh, the foreword was written by Archbishop Harrison Nana, and he wrote three pages about uh, the office. We stand in the prophetic office and uh, about my ministry, how it's brought impact to the world. Very powerful book. You should get it just to read what he said about me. If you want to know more about me, you can read what he said also. So, uh, the keys in this book about becoming successful are phenomenal. And uh, everything that God has intended to happen has to be acted upon by a person. If you don't change things, things won't change. And God not only won't, he can't, because he gave us the free moral agency to rule our lives. And he would, you would say, Lord, I'm waiting for you. God says, I'm waiting for you. Hello. So heaven is for God, he says, that's where he sits. But earth he gave to people. So if you allow stupidity and people that are evil and all that to mess you up, then that's a problem you have. But I, I tell you, the Lord wants to give us wisdom. He wants to help us understand what it is he wants to achieve. Get done through us. People blame God too much, they blame the devil too much. Let me tell you about the devil. He's a stupid loser. He's the biggest loser that ever was because he's so stupid that he can't even get saved. And Judas Iscariot couldn't get saved. He should have, but he didn't. And Saul should have uh, turned. Uh, he didn't. And the witch of Endor and who else? Jezebel, the daughter of the devil, all of them are burning in hell. Hitler and uh, Idi Amin and all these guys, they never got saved. So they had a chance because they were human, but the devil is so stupid that he doesn't even have a chance to get saved, ever. So if you dance around with him, he laughs at you. If you allow him to make you like be messed up, he's, he's laughing at you. He could even say, you think I did everything. I didn't even do it. You did it to yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm concerned about you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm very concerned about you. So the Lord is, is looking at us, shaking his head, going, the amazing thing is everything that you see and you have a desire to change it, but you don't change it, God will also leave it like that. Say amen or ouch. Amen. Say amen or ouch. Amen. The scripture says you have eyes to see, but yet you don't see. You have eyes to see, but yet, yet you don't see. And if you see, you don't do anything about it. Everything is subject to change, and everything God... Every single thing in the universe, God can fix. If we work with him to help fix it, but he needs somebody to do it. Without Jesus coming, nobody would have been saved. If he didn't pay the price. Without him going for the people and to the people with the power of the Holy Ghost, it never would have, uh, 
happened, you know. The miracles would never have happened. Because no man showed up to bring them forth. The man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 said, I have nobody to help me. Jesus said, well, well, okay, that's a bad excuse, but you've been here for 38 years. What's your problem? Then he says, now I'm here. Now I'm here. So what are you going to say now? Take up your bed and get out of here. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't have been here all this time. Take up your bed and walk. And go find a better place. You're healed. It's sorted out. He said, I have no man to help me. So God, Jesus said, well, I'm here now. So what are you going to say now? Well, guess what? In that day, Jesus had to show up physically, but Jesus already ascended to heaven and gave all power unto us. So from 2,000 years ago, it's already like he's standing in front of us saying, I'm here, I've been here, I'm already here. It's up to you now. Do you want to walk forward or do you want to stay where you are? See, a lot of people blame everybody else. Stop blaming people and start looking at yourself. If you want the Lord to talk to you, what he might do is very, sounds kind of rude, but what he might do is hold up a mirror in front of you. You say, God, I, I didn't want to look at me. I'm, I want something outside. I want something else. The Lord says, no, look at yourself. What's inside your mind? What's inside your heart? How are you taking care of yourself? How are you allowing your environment to be? If something's messed up, change it. If somebody's wrong in your world, get rid of them. Move, move them out of the way. You don't have to keep choosing the wrong thing. The most horrible thing is when you get deceived by somebody. It's a very bad, humiliating feeling. But guess what? The evildoer gets cursed, but the righteous will still get blessed. The righteous will flourish, but the wicked will be cut down. The Bible's clear on that. Psalm 37, read that. Isaiah 41, 11, read that. Those that set up something bad for you and do something evil to you, evil things will happen to them. Proverbs 17, 13 says, 17, 13 or 13, 17, I think it's 17, 13. says, those that cause... Uh, evil to happen for a good person, evil will never leave their house. So part of a real leader's job, not just a prophet, I'm a prophet, people think this is just for the prophets, they're wild, they speak wild things, they speak amazing things that like a pastor shouldn't say, no, 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 everybody, everybody should be prophetic. Moses said, I'd like you all to be prophetic, not pathetic. I'd like you all to be prophets. But you can't because a, a, a prophetic office is a very high thing. You know, God has to appear to you and give it to you like he has me. You know, I'm a very special individual, very unique individual. There's nobody, by the way, you can look everywhere, you'll never find anybody like me. There's no copy, there's no mold. There's no mold that I came from. I'm not like anybody else that I've ever seen. People say that a lot too. You want to find me? You can't. You want to find another me? There's not another me. Anywhere. Isn't that amazing? It's also a bit uh, upsetting because I'm like, I wish there were more of me. I'd like to make more of me. You know? And I don't know how far we can go with this as far as helping people get out of where they've been, but you, sometimes you're, in, the, you're in, this, in a certain environment with certain people and then you wonder why you're having the same issues all the time. No, it's time to change things. Lift your hands. It's time to change. It's time for change. Now, I don't, I don't even feel like I have to, you know, preach in a way to get you excited. I don't care. Listen to me right now. I don't care at all to make you shout. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even need the amen. I'm just speaking by heaven's, heaven's wisdom. The word of the Lord, and it's going to go and produce what God wants it to produce, and that's what I care about. Amen. I don't have to, like, get, you know, to say in a certain way to get you excited. I have no interest at all. When I say zero, I mean none, I mean zero. I don't care at all. I only want to speak what the Father is saying to help bring people up higher. You know, these preachers, they have to make noise. Ha! 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 
And everybody's like, huh, huh. And then the song and the dance, you got to do it like this. So everybody goes like this. For what? Is that changing your life? Do you have more money in your hand when you get home from that? Not at all. Do you have any breakthrough in your, your business life? When you leave the church on Sunday, does Monday, is Monday a better day because you received something from heaven? And that's the only way it happens. I, I have a friend, I have a friend who's a great man of God, by the way. He's great. He's a great man of God. He, I have a friend. But this guy has to do this thing where he starts screaming all the time in the middle of his message. And I, I turned it off. And I've never visited his church. I wanted to go three times in the last, uh, this last year. I wanted to visit him. I wanted to visit his church. I couldn't get there. I wanted to. I tried. I put it in my, my, my calendar to try to get there for a certain event, and I couldn't get there. I was only at the very big convention, the very big meeting. And all the, all the people by the hundreds, even by the thousands of people were co coming to talk to me and all of that. You know, so those kind of events, you know, I can get there because the Lord has something he wants to do for a lot of people. When there's 20,000 people in an event, you know, or however many, uh, hundreds of people will come up and t t to want to greet me and talk to me. And I'm supposed to see them because I have an assignment, you know, for the, to bless the people. You understand? But this bit that you have to start making all this noise. Why? Let me tell you something. Loudness is not power. Authority in the spirit is power. And you can have it when you're speaking in a loud voice, a soft voice, a whisper. You just turn and say, and things begin to obey you because you're carrying the authority of God. Say amen. amen. The Lord, let me see something. A wounded lion, big male lion, young, young. He was young. He wasn't so old. He wasn't an old lion. But he had the big hair like me, you know? You know what I mean? I can relate to the lion somehow. I don't know. It's just like that. Simba, lion of Judah. Yes. Praise the Lord. King, 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 king. The lion king. My friends in New York call me TLK, the lion king. They write me, TLK, how are you? The lion king. How's Africa? I was like, yeah. Uh, you better be glad I'm here and not you. Because <laughs> I don't know if you would enjoy it. But uh, so... This lion was wounded in his legs and he couldn't run. So 20 hyenas came around him. And you know how they are? They kind of creep up on it. They got tall legs in the front and they have short legs in the back. You know hyenas, how they walk? And if they back up, they back up like this. You know, they are funny legs. And they laugh. <laughs> You ever hear hyenas? Yes. They really laugh. I kept playing it back. I wanted to hear the sound. They're like, ah. what an amazing creation of God. So the lion just looked at them, turned his head, and all the hyenas backed up. The lion couldn't even move, and he didn't even roar. He was so tired. He wasn't feeling good. And he just turned his head and let out a little sound, not a full roar, and the hyenas all moved. Why? Because the lion has authority. He has power over the other animals. He's more powerful than them. So the fact, take that as an example. You say, I'm not like a hyena or a giraffe or a zebra. I'm like the lion and the lion. Why does God call himself the Lion of the tribe of Judah? You see pictures likened to Jesus like he's the Lion. Why? Because it's the most powerful creature, animal in the, in the animal kingdom. So humans have more authority than that, yes? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? So what's our problem? 
You have eyes to see, but you can't see. You have ears to hear, but you don't hear well. You have a heart to understand, but you, you, you don't work with it. When you see something that's wrong, you need to fix it. Yes. God is a fixer. Men are supposed to be fixers. You're supposed to be a problem solver. You're supposed to solve every problem. Anything you see that's wrong, you're supposed to fix it. You're not supposed to leave things broken and messed up. You're supposed to fix them. I, I have a friend, a man of God, Dr. Mike Murdoch in America. He said, I, he's a dear friend of mine. He said, he said I can't... Uh, I can't handle anything that's broken. You know, someone says, well, the car is, has a problem, it's broken. He looks at them and say, he looks at them and he goes, uh, what's the solution? Fix it. Is that hard? It's broken. Oh, it doesn't work. Uh, so that's okay for you. That's okay for you that it doesn't work. Or should it be fixed? Lift your hands and say, Lord, help us all. Say, help us all. Say, Lord, help me, please, in my life. You don't need to keep caring also about other people. You need to care about yourself. Let, the, let heaven show you the mirror. Even uh, Corinthians 3.18 says that. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says you, you, you behold as yourself as as looking at an image like a mirror, beholding the glory of the Lord. Meaning, you're seeing yourself in your unperfect state, imperfect condition, and the Lord wants to show you His glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Never, ever, 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 ever think that you're okay the way you are now. Because there's so much more to get done. Say amen. I talk a lot about that in this book. You need to get a hold of it. Praise the Lord. And uh, oh, they're 1,000 shillings. Maybe I'll let you have it for a discount. Let me think about it while I'm speaking. The Lord is wanting to help you change. Close your eyes and put your hand on your heart right now. And let's pray. Change is the order of the day. Change for the better. That's all that matters. People think everything else matters. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. The only thing that you need to know is what to do next. Every second of every hour, of every, every minute of every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, you, you all need to know what to do next. And what to do next is something that's going to improve the quality of your life. <laughs> and I'll just say this, leave the devil alone. He's an idiot. Just leave the devil alone. Things that are humanly possible to fix and make better, the devil had nothing to do with it. You blame him. He might say, you know what? I didn't do that. You blame me for everything. Huh? Leave him alone. Ignore him. Cast him out. Break his head. Remind him of his future. He only has one place, and that's right here under our feet. Say amen. And after that, that's the end of it. Focus on yourself and focus on God. Focus on yourself and focus on God on what he wants you to be doing. So I had a thought a while ago, and I'm not going to say it now because I need to process it because I don't know how, how I can say it. And I'm not going to say it now. But I had a thought a while ago. Very strong, very strong thought. And I'm trying to figure out how I can actually do it. Because if I do this, people could really get help. But at the same time, some local buffoons won't like it. <laughs> so
Some people that are just stuck in their own thing and they think they're so great. They're legends in their own mind, not in their own time. They wouldn't like what I'd have to say regarding this particular thing. So I have to process on how I'm going to figure this out and implement something new. But uh, the Lord is interested in you progressing. Are you hearing God today? This is the word of the Lord. God wants you to progress. He wants you to increase. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be well. He wants you to be altogether lovely and beautiful and powerful in every conceivable way. He wants you to be extraordinarily successful. And I talk about that in this book. Extraordinarily successful. So you online, if you'd like to get this book, just, I'm not going to talk about details of price or how to get it. Just write me a message on any of the social media platforms and uh, just write book, B-O-O-K, and send me the message. Click. That's all, that's all you need to do. And when we receive that message, we'll get back to you on how to get it. Amen? It's also available online. As an ebook, and we're putting it in, uh, in different platforms, and people around the world can also get a hold of it. Plus, all my other books. Learning is the key to growth. Anybody that's very successful financially, they have a lot of knowledge, they have a lot of wisdom, they have a lot of knowledge, and they had a lot of action to put in place what they learned and what they perceived. And this is what's missing. If you work on things hard every day in a smart way, your life cannot remain the same. Lift your hands. You cannot. Financially, socially, business-wise, family-wise, in any way, everything needs to get better. Amen. Lift your hands and let's pray. I'm not going to talk long here. I just want to speak this. God is interested in fixing things for us. And the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. But we look at scriptures like that and say, okay, now I'm just going to wait for God. God says, no, you need to take action. Because Proverbs said the diligent one becomes blessed. The diligent hand makes one rich, but the slack hand makes one to lack or to have poverty. Poverty was never the will of God. If you think in any way that poverty is the will of God, except for a wicked evildoer, they're the ones that should be poor and sick and messed up. But good people should never be. The righteous should flourish and the wicked will be cut down. And I, I just say this. To whoever thought it their right to try to hurt someone good, the curse of the Lord is upon them. The curse of the Lord is upon them. And they will be destroyed completely. Everything they have, they'll lose, including their mind, including their health. Any money they stole, if they don't give it back, they'll lose it all. And they'll be cursed like a destitute mad beggar on the side of the road. In Jesus' name. And the, the Lord said in Isaiah 41, 11, if you want to continue to strive with someone good, you'll perish. So we say to the evildoers, help yourself. I hope you're happy when you get to, to, to a burning hell. We hope you're happy at what you did and what you stole when you end up under God's judgment. People, see, God has, God has a few different sides to him. He's the loving father. He's the businessman. But he's also the righteous judge. That's powerful. He's a loving father. Amen. But a loving father loves you so much he doesn't want to leave you the way you are. He wants to help you change for the better. So there's also some counsel, some admonition and instruction in the, the power of God's love. It's not just like he's just okay with everything we do, no matter how bad or good it is. No, 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 no. That's not that. You, you won't find that in the Bible. He's a businessman. He's a brilliant businessman. He's not a man. He's business God. He's not a man. The Bible says in Numbers 23, 19, he's not a man. 
So, <laughs> he's not a man. He's, he's, he's a spirit. He's not a man that he would lie or change his mind. So, it's people and devils that, it's people and devils that do that. Lying devils and lying people. But God can never be like that. But he's also the righteous judge. And I'll tell you, some things need to be judged around here. Some people need to be stricken down, smitten and put down because the, the evil that they've done that even affected so many people. Like the people that steal, the people that lie, the people that cheat. Even in the government. Even the way that preachers have lived such horrible lives, many preachers, that the Holy Ghost left them a long time ago. Now there's no anointing to break and destroy yokes on people. You know, to carry the anointing is a very big deal. <laughs> to carry the anointing of God is not a joke. Say amen. amen. And to see a person who's truly anointed and has power with God. Wow. You almost never find anybody like that. I don't care if they're bishops, big churches, big things. Some guys figured out how to run a system, but the Holy Ghost is not even there. Lift your hands and say, Lord, please come back to the church. Please come back. Holy Spirit, please come back. We're missing you. Because Jesus even said, without me, you can't do anything. You can do nothing. And God wants everything to change for the better. But we need, we need the touch of heaven. Can you say amen? amen? All right, I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'm taking my flight. Well, we'll talk to you later. The Lord bless you. I love you all. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.